Greetings, everyone. Kamba here. As of yesterday, the Friday Night Funkin' Kickstarter finally came to a close, finishing with approximately $2.3 million raised. This is a big deal. This actually superseded the goal set by the developers by 38 times of what was expected. This math was done by me, so it's probably wrong, but you never know, I might be on to something. Otherwise, or nonetheless, it is a big deal, and I thought a new video talking about it was appropriate. Today I'm going to talk about why, no matter how the launch of the game goes, Friday Night Funkin' will continue to be successful for the foreseeable future. As we all know, Friday Night Funkin', especially as of recent, has been receiving much more mainstream exposure than typically seen. This is in part because of the innate quality of the game and music itself, but also because of the hype fueling the Kickstarter as of recent. So, appropriately, let's talk about hype and why in this game's case it's for the better rather than for the worse. So, to start things off, we should probably define what hype is, as nowadays it seems like it has a hundred different definitions depending on who you ask. So we'll go to our old friend Urban Dictionary for that. As defined by Urban Dictionary, hype is described as when someone gets excited about something, being the most basic example of this. An example being given by Urban Dictionary, damn, you hype, calm down on me. I can relate to that. Anyways, in recent times, however, as stated in Combo's dictionary, people setting expectations through the roof only to have one minor demand not met, hoops then proceed to go apeshit keyboard warrior mode on every innocent soul thinking about purchasing said game. I think this has been more recent nowadays with AAA developers promising a lot of things and us not receiving them, but this is something we've become accustomed to, especially when it comes to bigger games. Indie games, however, have not been too criminal of this except for things we talked about in a previous video, which I will not discuss now. We've seen this many times, as I said, examples such as Deltarune, Anthem, Call of Duty, and so on, but Friday Night Funkin's case, I believe for the first time in a while, the hype may actually be healthy for the game rather than worse. Let me explain. This game, as I'm sure we've all seen, has what I like to refer to as a self-sustaining community. Things such as mods, fan art, music, overwhelming community support has kept this game afloat and even grown the community more than what the developers could ever put out. This is only amplified by the support this game has received by other content creators such as myself covering this game and throwing it in the limelight. With all of the hype surrounding this game, as of now, we're likely to see a snowball effect of sorts and see an even bigger influx of community content created. This is why I believe the hype in this case, rather than other games, which often leads to negativity as we've seen in very mainstream game developers such as IGN and reviewers making things seem much worse than what they actually are, this game may actually see much more success from this as the more people see the game, the more likely we're to have more community content created. So we've discussed why hype may be for the better rather than for the worse in this game's case. But I also think it's important to talk about the time frame in which it was released and why it made it so successful. As of recent, and you may call me crazy for this, most of us at least that watch my channel grew up on Newgrounds, Cool Math Games, and the like. But we all lost someone very close to us. The person being Flash. On December 31st, 2020, Flash was disabled across all browser extensions, taking with it magnitude of internet history, including most of my childhood, because I didn't go outside much. But, besides the point, for Friday Night Funkin', I feel this may have made the game more appealing, you see, as many people who lose something, or someone in this case, they reach out for early alternatives to fill that hole they are feeling, and Friday Night Funkin' just so happened to release its first week only a few months after Flash was discontinued. And that same demographic that Flash appealed to, appealed to Friday Night Funkin'. The art style of this game also helped appeal to it, as it's quite similar to the Tom Fulp animation style, popularized by the Behemoth, with games such as Alien Hominid, Castle Crashers, and much more. This was also seen in the 2000s to late 90s, and most demographic that play games like this tend to gravitate towards that type of art style. So, in conclusion, it's really not tough to see why this game was so successful, but it's definitely mesmerizing to take a step back and see what led us all here. Things such as the self-sustaining community, the hype behind it, the talent from the developers, the art style, the time frame, everything has came together to make this game what we have now. 
it still blows my mind that an indie game made by three people has raised $2 million. Maybe it will inspire more things, and we'll see more things like this in the future, but I digress. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I'm not going to sit here and ramble for another two hours, but if you'd like to stick around with me for a little bit, I'm going to start a little new segment here where I actually show my favorite comments. As you guys know, I read all my comments. I'm not going to do the whole, you know, like and sub thing now, because, like I said, that's cringe as hell. But, you get the point. Thank you for watching, everybody. This is Combo. Stay home, stay safe. And, uh, yeah. Peace out, everybody.